babysitters of Reddit. What's your demon child story? I babysat all through junior high and high school to make my spending money. The worst was a referral for the friends of a family I babysat for at the time. There were two twin boys who were eight, and a little girl who just started her toilet training. The kids were very nice during introductions, but it soon turned out they were hyper as hell as soon as their parents left. The boys whooped and hollered and chased each other through the house. I convinced them to play with Legos or whatever in their room to quiet them down, because I had to deal with the little girl who needed to potty. She kept trying to poop in her little training potty, but it wasn't happening. Then I heard the boys screaming at the top of their lungs, so I left the girl on her potty to find out why the boys were freaking out. The boys' bedroom had two single beds. Each boy was standing on his bed, peeing at the other one like they were having a duel. They got urine everywhere on the walls, the carpet, the sheets, and of course, all over each other. I'm upset at these kids and tell them to change their clothes and strip the sheets. They just keep laughing at me and making me chase them around the house like it's a funny game to be soaked in pee. Meanwhile, the little girl who is not wearing any pants or undies drags her potty into the kitchen, singing at the top of her lungs about how she pooped and she wants me to look. When one of the boys runs through the kitchen, he accidentally overturns the training potty, and stuff gets all over the linoleum. As much as I wanted to cry from utter frustration, I managed to hold my temper and calm them down while I cleaned up as best as I could. Tough when it isn't your house, and I had no idea where they kept all the cleaning supplies. When the parents finally came home, they didn't offer any apologies for how their kids behaved or any extra tip or anything like that. Needless to say, that was the first and last time I ever babysat for those parents. Edit. This was way back before everyone had cell phones, so calling the parents to come home immediately wasn't really a good option. It would have involved calling a movie theater or whatever to track them down, and I didn't even know what they were seeing or even if they had finished eating dinner yet. Unless the kids were dying, I would not call the parents. I am rather proud of my 14-year-old self for being a trooper and sticking it out rather than giving up. Plus, it's just pee and poop. I had changed to diapers and cleaned up after pets before. Story 2. I babysat for a few families on my street as a preteen slash teen. Word of mouth spread and a family maybe six streets away asked me to watch three kids. Three kids seemed like a lot, but they said they would only be gone for a few hours. Parents leave and kids turn into demon spawn. Two little boys and one youngest child girl. They tormented her until she was literally hiding slash clinging to my legs and clothes. I turned on a movie and they were okay for a minute. Then, boy number one gets up and pulls his pants down and literally just starts peeing in the middle of the living room. He's totally potty trained by the way, he's like six. I freak out and start to clean it up and send the boy to his room. The other boy followed him as they shared a room and just sat there with him. The girl sneaks downstairs through all this and unbeknownst to me, starts making an F5 grade mess. After I clean the pee, I get them to go out of the boys' room. Surprise, door is closed. Oh, and apparently locked. The one boy is only like three and is crying because he can't open it and his brother won't let him out. The older boy is defiant and just screaming at me, no, I'm not opening it. You're not my mom. I want my mommy. We had a standoff for a few minutes before I realized the girl was gone. Well, I wasn't getting the boys out, so I went to get the phone and call the parents while I tried to find the girl. She had pulled out every frickin' toy, and they were everywhere. And I still couldn't find her because she was in like a pillow pile somewhere. I don't really have an ending to this story, but needless to say, I was pretty much in tears by the time they came home. One of them drove me home and kept apologizing and hoped I would give them another chance, which did not happen. Narrator's commentary. With the way this one started, I thought it was a repeat of story one. And then, no, I don't know if it's worse, though. It's definitely bad. They might be bad in their own ways. The first one had a lot of cleanup. This one, this one just sounds like hell, man. Story three. Not technically a babysitter, but for a few months I had to babysit my husband's nieces and nephews. These kids are awful. Their parents neglect them and it shows. Here are a few highlights. 1. I rescued a two-week-old kitten, nursed him back to health, and adopted him. One day while I was doing dishes, the youngest two took him outside and tried to drown him in the above-ground pool twice. He survived. 2. My in-law's house was filthy and roach-infested. While one of the kids was eating dinner, a roach apparently crawled across his plate. He started hysterically crying. I go to calm him down and one of the others runs into the kitchen, opens every spice she can get her hands on, and dumps them all over. 3. I decide I have to keep the two smaller ones with me at all times due to their antics. I put them on the kitchen counter to help me cook. They actually start behaving, and I thought I'd found a successful method in handling them. I was wrong. One asks me a question while the other takes out glasses from the cupboard and starts smashing them on the ground. I go to stop her when the other little one starts smashing plates. 
Four. The oldest two were sisters and they hated each other. They get into a fight over the TV. Could have been over the Xbox, I don't know. The older sister starts chasing after the younger sister. She eventually smashes the younger sister's fingers in the bathroom door. While the younger sister is crying, the older sister is laughing maniacally. That's just a few. There are several other stories that make me so grateful to have moved far away from them all. And I assume because they're family, you weren't paid, OP. Am I right? I hate this for you. Also, I just hate it for the children, too. They are clearly not having a good home environment. And that's really not their fault. That just sucks. I hope you were a positive influence in their lives at least, Opie, and it sounds like you were. Story 4. I am a full-time nanny, and have been for the past 5 years, but in childcare for the past 12. I am primarily a nanny of multiples, ranging from twins to quadruplets. Now with that being said, you'd think I'd run across a handful of demon children, which I have, but dear lord. It's the parents that are the demons on more than one occasion. This one in particular comes to mind. I started with a morning family that I found through Care.com, after my regular family shortened my hours to afternoons only. When I first interviewed the mom was notably odd, very in touch with emotions, and very particular about food. She stated that she wanted me from 7 to 12, Monday through Friday, for her 5-year-old son and her 3-year-old son, while she either ran errands or worked from home. Well, not too weird so far. But then she asked me what my parenting style was. I told her my style was whatever hers was. I am perfectly fine altering my nannying style to fit each individual family's needs. She told me she was wanting the answer of what I was going to do when I was a parent, not in nannying. I told her my philosophy, be kind, be consistent, timeouts for bad behavior, etc. She then told me hers. We don't tell our children no. We don't take their toys away. We don't do timeouts. We don't spank. Okay, I agree on the last one. But to say the least, I was confused about how the hell they run their household. Pretty much, she believed that each child had this emotional backpack where they store their feelings, and they need to express them constantly. She also mentioned to me that both of her children sleep in her bed. All well and good, but here's how her children acted with it once I was hired. I asked the three-year-old, still in diapers, to lay down so I could change him. He refused, so I gave him a warning that I was going to pick him up and lay him down to change him. He then ran off to his mother screaming and crying. I told her why he was crying, and this is what she said. Did OP do something to upset you? Oh, you just go ahead and cry. I'll hold you. Then once he was done with his tantrum, she said, I'm so proud of you for getting all those big feelings out. No, your child threw a tantrum because he didn't want his butt diaper changed. He didn't need praise for that. The five-year-old was very independent, very smart, and very OCD. At one point, his brother and I were coloring. Now, as normal three-year-olds do, he was scribbling. His brother came in and started taunting his brother and telling him he was doing everything wrong. I told the older brother, Your brother is trying to express his creativity. Let's encourage him rather than criticize him. The five-year-old was mad at his mother because she told him to get dressed. He came up, hit her across the face while screaming, and she just let him. She kept praising him for getting his big feelings out. He's still hitting her. So she takes him to the shower, turns the water on both of them fully clothed, and tries to get him to calm down. So, besides those incidents, I can't get either child to do anything, especially with the mother around. After a few weeks, she introduced me to more rules and more expectations. She wanted me to have a schedule with them, and wanted me to do some homeschooling. No big deal, sure. But then anytime I told them it was time for whatever, she would swoop in and say they could just play instead. Like, the children just woke up that morning and I told them to brush their teeth. They said they wanted to play, and the mom negotiated with them by asking if that's what they thought they felt they needed to do. Like, no matter what I or the mother said it was time to do, as long as the kid felt like he didn't need to do said thing, then he didn't need to do so. At one point, even the mom and I took the kids to the library. I told her we gotta finish up soon because I need to get going to my other job. We got to the car, and because the five-year-old didn't feel like getting in, she let him stand outside for 25 minutes before he felt like getting in the car, resulting in me being late for my next job. She was also really strange with food. She was one of those people who legitimately treated organic food as a religion, her words. She had a number system for food, one to five. The only things that were listed as number one as in completely healthy was a vitamin called Chivanaprash. Even fruits and vegetables were labeled as number two. Salads and healthy foods, number three. Bread, number four. And anything sweet, number five. The thing is, she classified anything above a number two to be unhealthy. So these children thought a simple salad or anything normal was bad for them, so they wouldn't eat it. And anytime they did have sweets, they would go frickin' nuts over wanting more because she deprived them of everything. They would have full day tantrums because of it. The last note is that she didn't allow any electronics in the bedroom, not even an alarm clock. So this meant that I had to wait every single day in the cold, ringing the doorbell constantly, sometimes up to 45 minutes for them to come answer the door. Needless to say, I quit within two months. 
It was utterly ridiculous. At the end of it, she asked me to review her family and children. She asked me the pros and cons. She was very shocked to hear that the only pro I listed was that the children had a very good vocabulary. The vitamin thing? I looked it up. I still don't know how to say it. I think OP wrote it incorrectly as well, because Google autocorrected it to something. Chivana Prash? Chiv Chivana Prash? I don't know, man. I tried my best. I'm sure one of you knows what it is, and you'll put it in the comments. But for me, I got more stories to read, so moving on. Story 5. Not so much a nightmare, but it was an odd night. I was in my senior year of college and picked up an occasional babysitting gig from Care.com. The family is well-to-do, awesome people in a hella good part of town, and the kids are 8 and 12, so I'm really only there to make sure no one burns the nice house to the ground. With that being said, the younger one, who we'll call Adam, was definitely on the spectrum. I head over one night and the parents call Adam down. I notice he's just in his tidy whitey which is how he slept, and he seems totally freaking out of it. The parents ask him to tell me what happened. When he's too incoherent to tell me, they finally blurt out that he had his tonsils taken out like 48 hours ago. Oh, okay, awesome. Thanks for the heads up. But I guess this is what I'm dealing with. So anyway, Adam goes back to bed and I don't hear anything out of him for the next, like, five hours because the little guy is high as hell on pain meds. I checked up on him a few times and we're good, whatever. It's now around 10 or 11 at night and I hear him come down the stairs and he's holding a stuffed animal Bowser. Hey buddy, how you feeling? Adam says nothing. What you doing, Adam? He silently walks to the kitchen. Adam, did you want something to eat? He opens the freezer in total silence. Why don't you let me help you, Adam? To remind you, this kid is in nothing but his undies and holding a stuffed animal. He finally acknowledges my presence and looks me straight in the eyes and then gargles, Bowser hungry. Still cracks me up thinking about it. I don't know why that was Adam's voice. It just, it just kind of came out like that. All of the inspiration, I guess, for that voice came from the word gargled, I promise. Nothing to do with him being on the spectrum at all. That didn't factor into it. I swear. Story 6. I used to babysit the two boys of a family while their parents went out once every few weeks to get some alone time. I looked after them before and they were usually well behaved and listened very well. This family had a few cats and they would climb in all sorts of odd places, such as the sinks, bookshelves, cupboards, etc. Well, this night, I guess they left the dryer door open. And when one of the kids went downstairs to get his ball hockey gear, I guess he closed the door on the cat and started the dryer. I was already outside waiting at this point, so I heard nothing about this until we came back inside, and I noticed the dryer was on. I asked the kids why it was on, and they said their mom was doing laundry. I knew for a fact that it was off when the parents left, so when I went to investigate, I opened it to a completely burned and mangled cat that was essentially twisted like a pretzel. I told the kids what happened, and that their kid was a psychopath and needs help now because he's clearly not right in the head. Never babysat anyone's kids ever again. The parents were in shock. They didn't blame me or get mad, just shocked that one of their kids murdered their cat like that. It still makes me uncomfortable to think about him. That's definitely an early warning sign. I hope the kid got some help and was treated with love and compassion and managed to grow up to be an empathetic and good human being. It's concerning behavior, though, but I do hope for the best, because, I don't know, I don't want someone to grow up to be messed up. Like, really, who would? Story 7. I babysat two kids throughout the school year and multiple days in the summer when I was in high school. I was pretty much a 9-to-5 nanny when not in school. I really loved those kids, which is surprising. Considering the first time I babysat them all day, it went to hell. The older sibling was a boy in my cousin's grade. The younger, a little girl. They were maybe 6-7 and 3-4 at this point. I'd babysat once or twice before, but never a whole day. I don't know what started it, but the kids began to fight. Before I could break it up, the little girl threw a heavy, pointy metal toy plane at her brother. It hit him right in the corner of his eye, barely missing his actual eyeball. He starts gushing blood everywhere, all over his clothes, all over the expensive Disney store Winnie the Pooh blanket his sister had been walking around with, all over the pristine white carpet. He freaks out and starts crying, asking me if he's dying. Hardcore, terrified kid sobs. I rush into action and usher him into the bathroom and get a cold washcloth. I had to coax his hands away from his face so I could see what I was dealing with. And eventually, I get the blood wiped away and see it's a very small cut. I have him hold the cold washcloth to his eye and I work on calming him down. The bleeding stops. I get him into fresh PJs and send him to his bed to lie down for a few minutes since he wore himself out. That's when I realized I haven't seen a sister in about 10 to 15 minutes. I got sidetracked with the bleeding panicking kid and now I have no idea where the culprit is. I run around the house and check all the doors and locks, still locked, so at least I know she's still inside. I'm fighting back tears and running around the house shouting her name trying to find her. I go back to her brother's room deciding that I need to get his help, and that's when I hear it. Little sniffles and quiet hiccups from behind his bedroom door. 
door. She was a small child and had hidden behind the door, fearing that she was in trouble and I was going to spank her. I didn't. So now I'm comforting her, but also telling her that hurting her brother and hiding from me isn't okay. I am completely drained and wigged out at this point, so I have the kids go to the living room with me and sit them on opposite ends of the couch. I put on a kid's film and get to work cleaning up the blood from the carpet and floor. Then I sit at the kitchen table, open concept, I can see them, and quietly try to calm myself down so I don't puke all over myself. I'm really proud I got the blood stains out of the carpet, though. I can't imagine how bad that would freak me out if I were taking care of a kid and their eyes started gushing blood. Like, ah... Ah, I would, I would be so afraid. I'm glad it just ended up being a little nick at the very least, but ooh. Eye injuries in general freak me out though, so I guess that's to be expected. Story 8. So I read the title and assumed you meant creepy children, but we can start with something pretty normal. I've been babysitting for almost 10 years. Newish client. Asked for some specific dates so she could complete her class. Only two hours, three kids. One was under a year, had colic. Easy. Well, well, well. The mom and dad must have had a crappy relationship because the oldest child lost a game and proceeded to guilt his younger brother by not only calling him names, but insulting his intelligence and saying he was worthless. He wasn't even six years old. His younger brother was four and responded by crying, agreeing, and coming to the conclusion that he shouldn't have won because he wasn't smart enough. Yeah, jerk child. I told him to go to his room after he refused to apologize for being mean. I walked him upstairs and told him it was only five minutes. He screamed, kicked the door, threw things at the door, and scratched me, telling me I was stupid when I tried to sit him down and explain that he did something wrong. Let's just say I didn't go back. Then there are the parents who just should not have children. I was doing a test run a few hours in the afternoon with a mother who only had one child. During that time, I witnessed her spank, grab, drag, yell in the face, and toss around a two-year-old. She screamed at him because he was cranky while she was on the phone. He also didn't share, because since he was the boss's child, the other kids would be scolded if they didn't share with him. And then I watch a six-year-old. She has some sort of multiple personality disorder, but I didn't know that the first time I watched her. She speaks to herself and me in third person, and she speaks of herself in third person and always negatively. She also has anxiety and asks me about super creepy subjects. For instance, today, she asked me what would happen if someone just stopped eating. I told her they would probably die, and she looked wistful. She has also spoken to corners, but she likes me and her mom pays well, so I keep coming back. OP, good on you for not being turned away by all the stuff in that last part. Or with that last child, I mean. Because children with these kinds of conditions are still children and they need to be watched and cared for and loved. Providing that to them is still exactly what they need, and you're doing a genuinely valuable service here. So, great work, OP. As for the other two, oh boy. Those are some suspect parents. The second one, obviously, more outright, but the first one with the kid saying, like, you're worthless because you're not smart, I, that is indicative of terrible parent behavior. I think OP hit the nail on the head when they said the parents don't have the best relationship. I hope these kids manage to beat the odds and turn out all right. Story 9. When I was 13, I was babysitting the two little boys across the street. At the time, they were about five, James, and three, Ivan. When I got there, the mother told me that Ivan was recently potty trained, but he was rather private, and would want to do his business on his own, and that I should let him. Well, everything seems to be going well. We start watching Chuck Norris Texas Ranger, and pretty soon Ivan says he's going to the bathroom. So he heads off and we continue watching Chuck. Five minutes go by, then 10. I go knock on the door, and no noise, and it's locked. Great. I yell at him to open the door, and he says, no. Well, at least I know he's okay. I bang on the door, beg him to open it. Eventually, I tell him if he doesn't, I'll tell his dad that he locked himself in there and he was disobedient and his dad will whoop him up. 1980s rural area, we all got our butts beat, but I wouldn't tell them though. It was an empty threat. Well, he opens the door and he and the entire bathroom are covered in crap. He had taken a huge man-sized dump in the middle of the floor and proceeded to sit in it, roll in it, and paint the entire bathroom with it. It was the most disgusting thing I had ever seen at that point in my life. There was crap in his hair. Then he looks me dead in the eyes and says, Kiss my poopy butt. There were no cell phones back then, so my mom had to come over and help me out with cleaning up. The parents paid me triple, and the poor kid got the belt the second I left. There was no hiding what had happened, as there was poo on the shower curtains and a few other places we just didn't know how to really clean in an hour or two. Yes, I babysat again, and he never did anything that bad again. But he was always a very wild and emotional child. Narrator just swooping in here to say that physical punishment on your child is psychologically proven to not work. Just saying. Story 10. 
babysat for family with three boys when I was about 16, had no problems with the older two, but once when it was time for bed, the six-year-old decided to start playing the drum set in their basement. I tried to convince him to put the drumsticks away and come upstairs, cue him proceeding to hit me as hard as he could all over my arms as I tried to defend myself. You wouldn't think something a bit bigger than a pencil would hurt, but god, it was painful. I was crying and convinced he had broken at least a couple of my fingers when I managed to get one of the drumsticks away, which led him to grab his iPod charging to call his dad, dad being away for business at the time, and telling him his babysitter was being mean. Eventually, had to call his mother to yell at him through the phone because I was half a second away from calling the police on this kid or just walking home a few doors down. Don't think he ever fell asleep before his mom got back, and didn't even get paid extra to make up for my inability to write for the next couple of weeks. Story 11. When I was in high school, I had just started getting into babysitting, and even then, because I was pretty busy most weeks, it wasn't much. Anyway, there was one family that would ask me to babysit their two boys every couple weeks or so. Not for long, usually a couple of hours. They were both great kids. Four and six. I always got along great with the parents, so I had no reason to expect what happened the last time I ever babysat for them. I arrived at their place at 4.30 on a Saturday, and everything was normal. Right before they were about to walk out the door, the mom says, Oh, oh my gosh, how awful of me. I forgot to tell you that the people we're going out with need a sitter for their kids, and we told them to just bring them over. We'll pay you more, of course. I asked, How many kids are they bringing? She said four. Four kids aged between 14 months and eight years old. It was only supposed to be two to three hours, and the mom swore up and down these were very quiet, sweet kids, and it wouldn't seem as though I was watching six kids in total. I agreed, as she seemed genuinely distraught that she'd forgotten to tell me, and as I said before, I had no reason not to trust her. So the other family brings their kids over and drops them off. All six of them. So I now have eight kids to watch, and right off the bat, one sets out to make my life a living hell. Very, very long story short, the adults were gone until 1 a.m. They paid me $34 for the entire night. They didn't answer my calls when I called about one of the kids who ate a banana, who then told me he was severely allergic to bananas. He wasn't, he was fine. But I panicked, trying to get a hold of his parents for quite some time. All of the kids went along with it until the sweetest child there, a little girl, about six, told me her brother was lying. The adults told me they were going to one local restaurant, Marketplace Grill, but they didn't, because I called it looking for them and there was only one location in our city at the time. They confirmed when they got home that they'd actually gone somewhere else. I'd called both couple cells probably three times each. Neither answered or called back or replied to my messages. I genuinely thought the kid might have a horrible allergic reaction and I was preparing to have to call 911. The oldest kid wrangled all the other kids to be horrible all night. To each other, to me, to the poor kitty named Mr. McFluffs. He had one child poop on the living room rug while I was distracted by another screaming and hitting his twin brother. Another kid vomited and the oldest demon child scooped it up and threw it on the walls. When I finally sat the oldest kid down and told him he was in timeout for the vomit incident, he picked up a ceramic figurine from the coffee table and tried to throw it at my head. I grabbed his arm halfway through his throwing motion and saved the stupid figurine. Then he broke down sobbing and said his dad hit him at night when his mom went to bed and showed me bruises on his ribs. I got very, very concerned. Then he broke out in hysterical laughter and told me he was just kidding. He just wanted to see the look on my stupid face. Nightmare night. I wasn't really upset with the original family I was babysitting for because it certainly wasn't their fault. It was just the other family's kids were hellions. But when she told me she purposefully didn't answer my calls because she knew I was calling about how bad things were, and then gave me $34? Yeah, nope. Nope. Never again. The other family, by the way, didn't pay me a single dime. This seems surprisingly common. Parents are like, parenting is so hard. Oh, children are so hard to deal with all this work we have to do. We just need a reprieve. And then they'll get a babysitter and then pay them garbage. I don't understand. You know how difficult it is. You constantly talk about it. And then you pay a babysitter nothing? Like, come on. I understand eating a break from kids, don't get me wrong. But fair compensation is also something I believe in. Babysitters, you work way harder than you get paid for most of the time. Keep on going. You are heroes of society. Story 12. I babysat for the neighbor kid. Quintessential spoiled only child. I was in my early teens and he was about seven when this happened. I normally babysat during the week in summer, when school was out and his parents were at work, but occasionally they would ask me to babysit for an evening out. This was one of those evenings. His parents were out with the mom's sister and brother-in-law, so I was taking care of the kid and his five-year-old cousin. They were pretty bratty, but nothing I couldn't handle, until they decided they had enough of me being in charge and got out their pocket knives. Oh yes. Their dads had gone out and bought pocket knives for them at the ages of five and seven. 
and decided it was cool for them to have it with no parental supervision. So the boys got out their pocket knives and started chasing me around the house with them. I wasn't brave enough to try to disarm them, but I was smart enough to know these kids weren't able to understand the damage they could do, so I ran. They chased me out of the house and proceeded to lock all of the doors. This was long before 13-year-olds had cell phones, but luckily I was just at the neighbor's, so I ran home. My dad is not a nice dude to begin with, but when I told him what was happening, he was livid. He went back with me and yelled for the boys to open the door. They unlocked it and then hid in the kids' bedroom. My dad ordered them into the living room, so they hid under a blanket on the couch. He demanded their knives, so they handed them out from under the blanket. My dad went home, and I sat there while those two crap heads hid under their blanket until their parents came home. Now, here's the kicker. When the parents pulled in, my dad came back over, told the parents what happened, and handed them the knives. The parents gave the knives back to the boys in front of us. Somehow, I still ended up babysitting for those jerks after that. Anyway, years later, it came out there was some seriously screwed up stuff happening to that kid, so no wonder he had behavioral issues. Sad, really. A prime example of kids not necessarily always being just innately demon children. Usually, something sets them off in some way, or puts them down a path. And it sucks, because a lot of the time you only see the demon child part of it, and you don't see what's causing it or how to help. Child development is brutal, and it's only made significantly worse by terrible people doing terrible things. Story 13. Not a babysitter story per se, but I imagine there are some terrifying stories about this kid, and the aftermath plays itself out quite well. My parents had some dear friends from church that had a couple of kids, both quite a bit younger than me. Family get-togethers were brutal, especially when we had to venture to their house. The kids were whiny and bratty beyond all belief. It was basically one constant breakdown, until one of the parents tried to usher the kids off to bed in their onesies. Anyway, at one of these ill-fated dinner parties, I was off trying to burn some time. God only knows what we did before smartphones. The elder child was playing with some thick wooden blocks. He didn't really have the gift of the gab, but he started sounding rather agitated. I turned to look at him and was greeted with a very close look at one of his wooden blocks as it cracked me right in the eye socket. As a 10 or 11 year old, I wasn't about to betray my veneer of toughness, so I took it like a man. The kid, however, started screaming his lungs out like I'd hit him with a block. His mom came rushing in fully prepared to admonish me for some perceived misdeed, until she saw the enormous goose egg growing above my eye. She asked me what happened and I tried to spell it out as nicely as possible. Her solution? The good night ritual of stories, songs, and soft cooing. But not before throwing out those evil wooden blocks that almost certainly drove her darling son to such madness. Fast forward eight years, making him about 15-16. The block thrower is in and out of juvie, insanely addicted to hard drugs, and constantly stealing from his family to feed his addiction. Parents, show a little tough love to your kids. I understand a soft parenting approach. I also understand there are parenting approaches that are simply too soft. This seems a little further in column B to me. At some point, you gotta be like, Hey kiddo, that was stupid. Probably shouldn't do that. Story 14. Most of the kids I babysit are great, considering most kids act up around the babysitter just to see their reaction or see what they can get away with. I can handle that, hell, I'm sure I did it to my babysitters. This one kid, though, loved to torture me. He knew I always gave a good report to his parents. If they knew their kid was a jerk to me, they would feel bad for me and stop asking me to babysit, and they paid well, so I definitely didn't want that. So, cue the torture. One time, he was in the tree fort and dropped slash threw a kid's telescope on my head. It hurt so bad, and I had a headache for days after it. Another time, he closed my finger in a door, right on the joint. That hurt so bad that I really thought it was broken. This stuff didn't happen often, and sometimes he was really nice and wanted to play board games and stuff. He's definitely better now that he's a bit older, but I'm gonna give him crap for it when he's older and can understand what a jerk child he was. Story 15. I was babysitting three little nightmares, one of whom would tear apart her dolls and then Frankenstein them Sid style, but add a touch of red paint along the glue lines, but that's a different story. Before the mom left me with her three demon spawn children, she told me the kids were allowed all the ice cream and candy and sugar they wanted, but they should go to bed around 9.30ish. Hearing this, as soon as the mom left, they went to town on the pantry. For the next four hours, they would not calm down. They were breaking stuff, they locked their kitten in one of the cabinets, and I spent half an hour getting the poor thing out. They had a dead cat in the freezer and pulled it out to show to me. Around 10, the youngest had passed out, and I carried him to his bed and tucked him in. One down, two to go. Half an hour later, the middle child had settled down in her room with her iPad just playing Minecraft. Two down, one to go. The older sister is in the living room making one of her Barbie hell spawn. This one had eight extra long limbs and no face. I really didn't want to confront this child because she was kind of scary. When I do convince her to go to bed, she goes into the room she shares with her sister and yells to her sister, who was about seven, about how there was a monster in the house and it was going to murder them all. Cue her sister flipping out and jumping through the open window and running to the road at around 10.45 at night. 
I freak out and jump out the window and run after her. I catch up to her just as a car is passing and all they see is me grabbing a little girl and dragging her into the forest. So yeah, that was the last time I ever babysat for them. Story 16. Not a babysitter, but a camp counselor. Most of my kids were lovely. I had kids from ages 6 to 16. One of the kids, Justin, was 12, but he was 6 feet tall. A bit annoying and sometimes didn't know when to stop a joke, but overall, a nice kid. He got along really well with the younger kids, which sometimes looked a bit odd because of how large he was, but in reality, we realized he got along with the younger kids because he had a mentally disabled little sister. Now, one of the other 12-year-old girls didn't like Justin. She was a gossipy brat. Her little sister was also in the camp and had been hanging around Justin. She started making up rumors that Justin was hurting her little sister and he was being creepy and told her mom about it. Mom comes in and starts ranting about this other 12-year-old because her precious daughter told her things, and how she wanted him kicked out of the camp. Luckily, we knew this kid for years, and we're watching them constantly. We said we would monitor the situation, but no way in hell we were going to kick out a 12-year-old based on a rumor that we knew this girl started. This girl thought she was going to get what she wanted because her mom believed her. What she didn't know was that we took note of her own bad attitude. And that's all the stories we have for today. We ended it on a pretty tame one, all things considered. A very mundane kind of evil. A little scheming, a little Machiavellian. A little fun. Fun in the context of a story, I mean, still a crappy thing for a child to do. Justin sounds like a really nice kid. I wonder what he's up to now. I also wonder what the girl is up to now. I hope she's stopped spreading rumors and, I don't know, just being a nuisance. Proud of the camp for handling it the way they should, though. Just being like, yeah, we watch them all the time, I don't think this is true. But also being like, we'll monitor the situation because, hey, maybe something does happen. And I know they're probably just saying that to appease the mother, but hopefully they at least did watch a little bit. Just to make sure, you know? I think it's worth a double check. I'm sure some of you out there have babysat before, and if you have, and have stories of your own about demon children, throw them in the comments. Kids, in general, kind of freak me out, I'm not gonna lie. It seems like they can do just the meanest things and not even know what they're doing, and something about that is absolutely horrifying to me. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.